Hey, what's up guys? I hope you liked the new intro. I want to thank my buddy Check Tutorials for making that intro for me. You can check him out at youtube.com slash check tutorials and uh, he makes some really nice intros so you guys go check him out. Subscribe to his channel. He's really cool. Um, but uh, let's get to the point of the video today. Today I'm going to be showing you how to downgrade your PlayStation 3 using your iPod Touch or iPhone. Now this works with the iPod Touch first generation iPhone 2G and iPhone 3G. So that's the first generation iPhone and the second generation iPhone known as the iPhone 3G. This will not work with the iPhone 3GS or the iPhone 4 and this won't work with the iPod Touch second gen, third gen, or fourth gen. So keep that in mind. It's just first gen iPod and first gen iPhone and second gen iPhone. Now this iPhone or iPod needs to be running on the 3.12, 3.13, 4.0, 4.01, 4.02, or 4.1, and you need to have this iPhone or iPod jailbroken with either the Ponage tool, Red Snow, or Black Rain. You cannot use Spirit. If you guys don't know how to jailbreak an iPhone or an iPod Touch, check out my previous video. I have an annotation like here, and you can check out how to jailbreak that phone or iPod, and then you can come back to this tutorial and get your PS3 downgraded. Okay, so let's go ahead and get right into it. We're gonna go ahead and get this set up so we can jailbreak our PS3. I'm gonna go over to my computer. Okay, so you're going to need a few things before you get started here. You're going to need, of course, your iPhone or iPod Touch. And then you're going to need two USB flash drives. You can do it with just one, but I recommend using two because it's a little bit easier. Because we're going to, it's actually just going to eliminate a step and make it a little bit simpler for you. So you don't have to run back and forth between your PlayStation and your computer. Um, also, it would be a good idea to make sure that they look different from each other. Because um, if they're the same, you could get them mixed up. So also, you're going to need WinSCP. I have a link below to download that. You're going to need the file that you need to download from me that includes everything that you need to do this downgrade. That'll be in the in the description below as well. And then you're also going to need Open SSH for your iPhone or iPod. You can get that in Cydia. Just go ahead and search for Open SSH. Also, you will need Open iBoot installed on the iPhone or iPod that you're going to be using to downgrade your PS3. If you haven't done that and you don't know how to do that, I'm going to have an annotation somewhere on the screen that's going to show you how to do that. Go watch that video first and then come back to this one. Okay, so first up here, you want to go ahead and unzip the RAR file that you downloaded from me. So let's go ahead and open it up here. And then you just want to go ahead and unzip it out to your desktop. Once you've unzipped it, you're going to notice that you have a folder here called Downgrade. Let's go ahead and open that up. And then you're going to see two folders here. You're going to see one for your flash drive and one for your iPod or iPhone. Let's go ahead and start out with the iPod and iPhone folder. So go ahead and open that up. And you're going to notice that you have two more folders, one for I, the iPhone 2G and 3G, and then another folder for the iPod Touch first generation. The steps are all going to be the same, but you're going to use a different folder, at, uh, you know, depending on which device you have. So I have the iPod Touch first generation, so I'm going to go ahead and open that folder. And then you'll see that I have an android.img file and a zimage file. Um, to some of you, these, these uh, files are going to look pretty familiar. Um, to some, it may not. But let's go ahead and get this out of the way now. What we need to do is go ahead and connect to our iPod Touch using WinSCP. So go ahead and open that up. Now you need to know your iPod's IP address, which you can find in the settings. But mine is 192.168.2.28. The username and password is always going to be root for the username and alpine for the password. And you always want to connect under the SCP protocol. And just go ahead and press login. This error message is always normal. Just go ahead and click OK on it. And then on your iPod, you want to go ahead and scroll to the VAR file directory. So you should see it there, V-A-R. And then if you've done this before, you should see an android.img file and a Z image file. You want to go ahead and make sure that you back these up because these are the files that you actually use to jailbreak your PS3 if you're using your iPod or iPod Touch to jailbreak it as well. So you want to make sure that you save these. And also you may notice that you have a folder called PS Freedom. And if you have that folder, you want to go ahead and copy that too. So once you've got these three files selected, you want to go ahead and just drag them out to your desktop. That, that way you know they're saved and backed up. All right, now once you have those files backed up, you can go ahead and delete the android.img file and the zimage file. Now this is where our two files from a minute ago come in. We're going to go ahead and open the downgrade folder back up and then scroll to the iPod iPhone directory and then your appropriate device. I'm using the iPod Touch first gen. Go ahead and highlight these two files and you just want to go ahead and drag them over into WinSCP. That way they go onto your iPod or iPhone. Just go ahead and hit copy. 
And while that's going, it'll take a couple of minutes. You want to make sure you drag it into the empty space down below a folder, or else it'll end up going into that folder, and you don't want that because then you won't be able to find the file, most likely. Okay, now that that's done, you should see your two files here now. You want to make sure that the permissions are set correctly on them. So let's see here. We just want to check. And it looks like for me that they're not. Those should all be, say read write. So let's go ahead and click here, highlight them both, then right click and hit properties. You can also do them one at a time if you don't know how to highlight them both. Once you hit properties, you're going to come up to a page that looks like this. You want to set this box to 0777 and then press OK. It'll take just a minute. And then you'll see here, now it's read write on all. So now that we're done there, we can go ahead and close this out and press OK to terminate. And then what you want to do is go ahead and click back here until you get to your flash drive folder. Open up that flash drive folder and then go ahead and grab your first flash drive and put it in your USB port. Once you do that, you want to go ahead and open it up. Once you have your flash drive opened up, you want to go ahead and delete anything that's on it. Make sure it's completely clear. And you want to go ahead and grab the files out of the first step folder and go ahead and highlight them both and copy them onto your flash drive. One of these files is pretty large. It's 167 megabytes, so it'll take just a little bit to copy over. That's actually the update file that we're copying. Okay, now that that's finished up, go ahead and close out your flash drive and go ahead and take it out of your USB port and then put in your second one. If not, just go ahead and skip this step if you're only using one USB flash drive and I'll tell you later on in the video when to go back and move over this second file. So now that you've got your second flash drive put in, you want to go ahead and browse back here and you want to go into the second step folder and copy that file. Then we'll go ahead and get our flash drive opened up. And you just want to make sure that you delete anything off of that flash drive so it's completely clear. And then go ahead and paste that file that we just copied. And you go ahead and close out your flash drive and remove it. Now we're ready to head on over to the PlayStation. Okay, so now that we're over at the PlayStation, you can see that we are on version 3.50. Now you want to make sure that you have your two USB flash drives, and you also have your iPod or iPhone with you. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom out here so you can see the whole TV and the PlayStation. Alright, now, first step is to go ahead and turn your PlayStation all the way off from the menu. So turn off system. And while that's turning off, you want to go ahead and grab your iPod or iPhone. And you're going to make sure that you power it all the way off. So go ahead and press and hold your power button. And then slide to power off. Once that turns off, go ahead and turn off your power switch on the back of your PlayStation. And then you want to go ahead and plug your iPod or iPhone into the PlayStation. Alright, now go ahead and turn your iPod or iPhone on. It's going to come up to the open iBoot screen. Now you want to just go ahead and press the power button until it selects the little Android guy down at the bottom. And then press your home button. And then immediately go ahead and turn the power switch on on the back of your PlayStation or plug it in if you have a slim model. And you're going to see some text come up on the screen. As soon as you see it say device ready and wait, you want to go ahead and press the power and then the eject button quickly on the PlayStation. Now what's going to happen is the PlayStation is going to sit there for a couple of minutes, or actually just a few seconds, and then it's going to turn off. Once the PlayStation turns off, you want to go ahead and unplug your iPod or iPhone, and then just turn it on like normal. Once the PlayStation boots up, you'll notice that it's in service mode, because you'll see this red box, and it'll say PlayStation 3 service mode. So now we're good. So now, uh... Well, what we can do, if you want to, we can just go ahead and check and make sure that we're still on the 3.50 firmware. If your controller doesn't seem like it's syncing up, you may need to plug your controller into the PlayStation to get it to sync up. Okay, here we go. We're going to go ahead and check and see and just make sure that we're still on 3.50 firmware. Yep, and it looks like we are still on 3.50. I'll zoom in so you guys can see. There you go, 3.50. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is just turn the PlayStation off right from the menu. So we're going to go ahead and hold down the PS button, turn system off, and we'll let it turn off. While it's turning off, go ahead and grab your first flash drive, which is the flash drive that we put the, the larger files on first. And go ahead and unplug your controller. You want to go ahead and make sure you put your flash drive 
into the last USB slot on the right of the PlayStation. So if you only have two, put it in the second. If you have four, put it in the fourth one. And what you want to go ahead and do is just turn your PlayStation on just like normal. And what we're doing right now is we're actually loading the firmware onto the device. Now we're loading the 3.41 firmware. And you're going to notice that your USB flash drive is going to light up and also your hard drive indicator light is going to light up. It's going to stay here for about three or four minutes while it installs the new firmware. Once the PlayStation's finished, it'll turn itself off. Okay, so it looks like the PlayStation just turned off. So what you want to go ahead and do is just remove your flash drive and then just turn the PlayStation on like normal. Okay, so now that the PlayStation's booted up, you are going to see that we're still in service mode. But let's go over here and just check and make sure that it actually downgraded. And go down to system information. And yeah, you can definitely see that we are on 3.41 firmware now. I'll zoom in so you can see. There you go, 3.41. So now our last step here is to go ahead and get it out of service mode and just back into normal mode. So what we'll go ahead and do here is just turn the PlayStation all the way off. And do it from the menu. So turn system off. Yes. And I will warn you, um, when you do downgrade your PlayStation, it does do like a factory reset. So if you have any game saves or anything that you want to keep on your PlayStation, you want to go ahead and back that up before you start this process. All right, so now that the PlayStation's off, you want to go ahead and grab your second USB flash drive. Or if you don't have a second USB flash drive, you want to go back to the computer and put the second set of files on your flash drive and erase the first set that I was telling you about. So now you want to go ahead and take your second flash drive and put it in your PlayStation. And like I said before, make sure that you're putting your flash drive in the very last USB slot on the right hand side. So once you go ahead and have your flash drive put in, go ahead and press your home button on your controller or press your power button on the PlayStation and turn the PlayStation back on. And what it's going to do here is just kick the PlayStation out of service mode. It'll take about 10 seconds and the PlayStation is just going to automatically power off. Alright, now once the PlayStation powers off, just go ahead and pull out your USB drive and turn it on just like normal. Now you see that now that the PlayStation's booted up, it's doing the like the factory reset to where it, like it looks like it was when you took it first out of the box. So here we're going to go and pick English. Yes, I'm going to use my HDMI cable. And I am Central Time. Sure, that's what time it is. Why not? Yep, user one's fine. It's going to want me to set up my internet connection settings. Okay, so now that I'm back out of the XMB, I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys that I am on 3.41. Alright, there it is. I'll go ahead and zoom in just in case you guys can't see that. There it is, 3.41. Now is where you jailbreak your PlayStation. Now you have a PlayStation that's on the 3.41 firmware. It's ready to be jailbroken. Um, now you just have to use your jailbreak device. If you have a USB key, like an X3 Max, or if you're using something like an E3 card reader, um, you can just go ahead and pop that in. Just go ahead and turn off your PlayStation, pop it in, jailbreak like you normally would. Um, but if you were using your iPod or iPod Touch to jailbreak, you may need to put your files back on your iPod or iPod Touch, the ones that I told you to back up and then you can go ahead and use your iPod Touch to jailbreak. I'm going to go ahead and use my X3 Max just to show you guys that I can jailbreak it now. Alright, so it turned off. I'm going to go ahead and flip off my power. Put my X3 Max in, turn the power back on. Do power eject. Alright, so let's boot it up. I'm going to take the X3 Max out. If we go over here, we should have the install package files folder and the app home PS3 game folder. I'm going to zoom in just to make sure you guys can see that. You just successfully downgraded a PS3 from the 3.50 firmware down to 3.41 and we're able to jailbreak it. Alright, so that's it. I really hope it was easy for you guys. If you followed everything correctly, you'll be able to use this to downgrade your PS3. If you had some problems, just let me know down in the comments. Leave me some questions down there. You can also check out my website, ChrisTechTV.com. And go to the forums. I'll have plenty of support there for you guys. Also, remember to subscribe to my videos so you're always getting my newest videos and updates. And I want to go ahead and give a quick shout out to my buddy ZZ Swizz ZZ. He has really cool uh, YouTube videos for like Modern Warfare gameplay, and he also does really funny commentaries. You guys should go check him out and subscribe. So his YouTube is youtubecom ZZ. Go check him out. He's awesome. Subscribe to him. But that's it. And I will catch you guys in the next video.